Junkyard champion Jim Gregatus of Brockton, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of Bill Treeful of Upper Union Street, Franklin, Massachusetts, on panel pin bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Candleton Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and I'm speaking for the whole crew always when I say we are sure happy that you joined us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Candleton Bowling, total pinfall determining our winner. Now, each of our bowlers gets a permanent souvenir provided by Din Brothers of Boston Holyoke. These uh, will be inscribed with the name and the date and so forth and make a wonderful permanent souvenir. Each will receive some money. Guaranteed is 700 to the winner, 350 to the runner-up, $50 to the winner of each string, and if they tie a string, it will be $50 each. All right, let's talk to today's bowlers, shall we? <laughs> Hi, Billy Trefel. How are you? Stand Hi, over thanks, here sir. where the folks can get see the cameras there. We want to get a better okay. shot of you that way. Uh, we've had you here several times, and the last time we uh, talked to you, you were going to make a big change. You were then a police chief and uh, had been for a long time, and now you are? Now I'm a, a lay brother living in a monastery, uh, making hay and silage and working with the cows and enjoying a peaceful life. And you're enjoying it? Uh, yeah, very much so. I'll tell you, Big change. what a contrast. Wow, from <laughs> chief of police. But back to Olin anyways, Don. Uh, yeah, and I noticed that uh, you did very, very well with uh, Jack Sanic, who was here. You didn't have to face him. Uh, he was your partner when you guys won the international championship, huh? That would have been tough to both Jack. Jack and I have been good friends, and. Um, it would have been difficult. And, uh, we, you know, we'll get arrested if we don't mention Craig Holbrook and Dave Richards and Danny Myrick and uh, Paul, Paul Berger. Berger. You better mention Paul Berger. <laughs> yeah. Paul Berger. Yeah. Right. Some familiar names to you, too, right? Oh, yeah. I've heard of a few of them. Yeah. Well, see, now you're in the category of a champion on our program, and uh, we've been on the air for... Yeah. What are we in our seventh, 37th year now? And you, a lot of big names have been in there in Cattlepin Bowling. Now well, you're one of them. Well, hopefully he'll stay there for a while, too. So. Well, he, he might have something to oh, say yeah. about that. Sure he will. <laughs> because he has run into a lot of tough luck the last few times he's been on. Yeah. Let's not waste any more time. Let's Thanks get to go with the match. Thanks, right after this, we'll get underway. Today's challenger, Bill Trefel, Franklin, Massachusetts. High single, 193. High triple, 492. His league average is 125. Four horsemen left side, and in back, he has the eight pin. No wood. He has left one and seven. Nine. Bill won his roll off at the Westgate lanes with a 682. Thin hit to the left side, punching out the two and four. Looked like it was going to be a big hit, and instead he knocked out just the head pin. Looked like it was going to be a nice one-three pocket hit. Ooh, that ball broke in and a five. All right, now our defending champion, Jim Gregatus of Brockton, Massachusetts. High single, 194. High triple, 466. The league average is 122. Looking at one, two, four, and five. He has it. In case some of you don't know, Jim made his first appearance on our program last week and defeated Jack Sanic in Jack Sanic's sixth week. Seven is the fill. He's left the one, the six, and the ten. There are three pieces of wood, one just to the right of the one, and a couple of them are a little bit behind and to the left. Kind of a surprise to him. I think he thought that he was going to make the spare, but he left the six pin.
It's a nine. Bill Trefo, now looking at one and ten with Wood in between. His first appearance on our program was back in 1983. And he has left the ten. He was unsuccessful that time, came back and won. It's a ten. He beat Don Richmond, an excellent cattle pin bowler. And that was in 1985. Since then, Bill has been unsuccessful in six attempts, but he's been in with some heavy hitters. Last time it was Tom Olsta. Two, four, and six. Yes! our defending champion. Is he going to get it? Nope, he has left the five pin. Seven. Two, four, five. Those are the three pins standing. The only piece of wood is in back. Right on the edge of the pit. Ooh, that looked as if it was going to go. It would look like a perfect hit. With the two and the five. But the four is still there. And it is still there. All right, after four boxes of the first string and the second, we always take a check on the scoreboard. Our challenger, Bill Trefo, has a bonus ball still to be rolled, but the score at the moment after four is our defending champion, Jim Gregatis, 52, Bill Trefo, 34. Bill Trefo, today's challenger, is filling a strike on top of his spare. Two marks in a row. And he has another strike. $50 in bonus money so far for our challenger, Bill Trefel. And when he comes up, he'll be working on a strike. Jim Gregatis, today's defending champion, is looking at four horsemen left side, and in the back, he has the five. There are still three pins standing, the four, five, and seven. A ten. Pin just uh, toppled, leaving now the eight and ten with one, two, three, four, five pieces of wood lying on the deck. Four of them are pretty much perpendicular to the pit. One is parallel, and uh, they're off a little bit to the left. He made it. Made it work. Fifty dollars in bonus money so far for our our challenger, Billy Trefel, it's still alive. He's working on a strike. And he had two strikes in a row. We didn't like to do anything to jinx him. Now he's looking at one, two, and ten. Is it going to happen? Yes. 
So $50 more in bonus money for four marks in a row. His ball, which breaks from right to left that time, looked as if it was going to come in perfectly on the one three pocket. And then as it got closer, it began to curve just a little to the left and came in too full on the head pin. It's an eight. Eight is the fill. He has left the six pin and the seven. There's one piece of wood that's rolling around just a little bit to the left of the six pin. And another is pretty quiet over about where the two would be. He used that one but did not get the other to work. To 10. Obviously, my detailed explanation of what's happening is primarily, again, I remind you very quickly for those who are totally blind or have very limited sight and do want to enjoy the program, as we all do. It's a strike. Billy Trefel has lost the last six times he's been on this program, but guess who he has lost to? Three times to Tom Olsta. Another time to Jim Putney. And another time to Tom Morgan. How would you like that? Okay, Billy Trefo right now. All right, here's the fill on his spear. And he gets nine. The six is the one pin standing. Seven more. An excellent 149 after beginning with a nine and a five. All right, Jim Gregatis, our defending champion. Two pins to knock down, the three and the six. Missed the three. He has two pins. They are happen to be side by side. It's a seven and eight, but he has wood on the deck. Well, one just rolled off, went off to the right. Still has three pieces. Just a question whether he will take out the eight and not get the seven. No, it was the opposite. He got the seven and not the eight. And the wood was right in front of the eight, but everything spun left. One twenty-eight. So fifty dollars in bonus money will go to today's challenger, Bill Trefel, as he has won the first string one forty-nine to one twenty-eight. In the middle string, our defending champion leads it off. 
It's Jim Gregatus of Brockton. Missed the head pin. Got four. He's now looking at the one, the three, the five, four, five, seven, and nine and ten. Now he has two. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, calls time. Wants to go down and take a look. Okay, he says everything is in play. A 10. Two, four, and eight with Wood in, uh, in back of the two. And the 10 pin alone over on the right. No, nope, four pin didn't go. Today's challenger, Bill Trefel. Franklin Bass. Ralph Stewart has just called time. Going to get one pin that was in the gutter on the left on lane two. And he gets a hand. Ralph, of course, our lob line judge and referee. Don Riley is our statistician. Al Giglio keeping score on the electronic scoreboard. Keith Williams keeping score on the big board for the folks who are there and keeping it all together. Phil Rubin, our producer and director. All right, Bill Trefel is looking at the head pin, eight, and over on the right, the six and ten. Ten pin didn't go. Ten. been rocked but wouldn't go he has the five and ten but he has some wood oh. wow the wood that it looked that looked as if it was going to go over and get the ten did not it went on a completely parallel plane and went this side of it so it is a ten Our crew today is Emmerich Feldmar, Bob Oliver, Ron Schindler, Jeff Sullivan, and in post-production videotape, George Ellard. Our defending champion, Jim Gregatis, looking at 3-6, 4-7, no wood. Nope, too far to the right. Got just the six pin. Oh. It's a seven. Horseman left side, no wood. So close, left the seven pin.
Yes, it's a 10. Now our challenger, Bill Trefill of Franklin, Mass. Today our high-low jackpot is worth $100. Our home viewer is up to $300. Wow, one pin out of there. It is the two pin. One and seven still there. How many times have I said how difficult this game is when you can roll a ball just to the left of the head pin and take out one? It is a tough game. That's why when I'm in Florida, sometimes someone will ask what I did for a living, or, and I tell them I'm still doing it. <laughs> and I mention what I'm doing here, and they say, oh, yeah, what kind of scores do those guys get? And when I tell them, they say, oh, holy mackerel. I said, you come up and try, and let's see what you can do. It's a tough game. Nice shot for Billy Trefel. And a spare. Again, after four boxes of the first and the second, we take a check on the scoreboard. With a bonus ball still to be rolled by today's challenger, Bill Trefel, the score right now after four is Trefel 39 and Gregatus 37. Jim Gregatus looking for his first mark in the middle string. Last week when he defeated Jack Sanek in Jack Sanek's sixth consecutive week, he rolled a hefty, he meaning Jim Gregatus, a hefty 392. Wow! Nine pin just refused to go. He had about three shots at it. The first one, then a piece of wood went by one way, came off the sidewall, and missed it again. Ten. Everything down except the six pin. Now for a spare to pick up the six pin. He's all over it. Bill Trefel, today's challenger. His fill on a spare is seven, but he has a split. Two, four, and six. Got the two and four and did it by using some wood in the hope that he could get something to go over and get the six. It's a nine box. Once again, simply because I'm right virtually behind him on lane three here, I could see the ball break away from the head pin and to the left. He still has two pins left, the four and the seven. He had the one and three, which he just picked up. It's another nine. Now, midway through the match, our defending champion, Jim Gregatis, from Brockton, Massachusetts, working on a spear. Here's the fill. Two more have just tumbled. Eight is the fill. The two pins standing are the seven and eight. He's got three pieces of wood. They're off to the right, where the three and six and ten would be. They're kind of spread out. He'll try to use to try to get the parallel pin. He got it. 
using the wood perfectly and puts another spare up on the board. For three in a row, maybe. Won't be easy. Eight is the fill, but the two pins that are standing are occupying the corners. Seven and ten. Wood right in the middle. One piece of wood back near the pit. Two of them are where one and three would be. That's what he's going to look at. And he got just the ten. Didn't he didn't get the ball to deflect over to get the seven. He has it for a ten. Now challenger Bill Trefel. Five, nine, and ten. Wood in front of the ten. Well, I'm not sure what he had in mind, but I, I do believe that he intended to go for the one three and just missed it. It was hard to tell because the ball actually went right for the ten. No wood to help. Four horsemen right side and in the opposite corner, the seven. Corners are full now, seven and ten. The executive board of the WCBC Pro Tour has dedicated this past January tournament and all future January tournaments to the memory of Stacia Zernike, who passed away January 17, 1993. And I'll give you the results of that tournament. But right now, let's watch our defending champion, Jim Gregatis of Brockton, as he fires. And now he's looking at the head pin, the nine, and the ten. Wood between the nine and the head pin. He's waiting for some rolling wood. Nine still there. In that tournament, Marianne Kelly came in first, followed by Carol Downey, Donna Banzi, Dorothy Ellison, Valerie Joy, tied for fourth. For the men, Bob Bettencourt was the winner, Gary Carrington, Mike O'Brien, Jim Flynn, and Mark Gregory followed in that order. Jim held that one a wee bit too long, and it went off to the right. So he's looking at the two, the eight, and the nine. Wood just in front of and in back of the two. Boy, that nine pin doesn't want to go. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, calls time. Loose ball. Ten. So a disappointing 113 for our defending champion. Bill Trefel, today's challenger. And he's got quite a split here with the object pin becoming the six and then across the back, it's the seven, the eight, and the 10. Or if you prefer seven and eight side by side over on the left and six and 10 on the right. Waiting for some wood to settle down. Almost pulled it off. The eight pin's the only one that didn't go. A 10. 
92. So close to a strike. Everything down except the seven. For a spare, yes. Woo. That was a little close. So 102. And uh, the best, of course, that he can do is a 112. So Jim Gregorius will, will win the middle string. Seven more. 109. And as I said, $50 in bonus money goes to our defending champion for winning the middle string 113 to 109. However, after two, he is trailing by 17 to Billy Trefel's 258 to 241. Challenger Bill Trefel of Franklin, Massachusetts, leading in the match by 17 as we begin the third string. Half Worcester right side punching out the three and the nine. Now he's looking at the head pin, the four and seven on the left, the six and ten on the right, and only one piece of wood between the six. Ooh, right through. It's a fiver. An inverted triangle made up of the five, six, and nine. Piece of wood just to the left of the five pin, which he will try to use. He did. <laughs> Our defending champion, Jim Gregatus. G-R-I-G-A-I-T-I-S. And it is of Lithuanian extraction. Ralph Stewart wants to take a look at the one piece of wood that's right in front of the head pin. The three pins standing are the head pin, the seven and eight, and there is wood right in front, but on a bad angle. It didn't get the one, it did get the nine, that piece of wood, and it rolled right up against the seven, but didn't knock it down. Nice shot to pick up the one and seven. It's a 10, and he picks up five pins right there. The lead now 12, but he's opposite. A spare by Bill Trefo. Just one pin to pick up the 10 for a matching spare. Again, he's waiting for some wood, which is where the five would be. He was all over that one. So we have matching spares. And our defending champion has picked up five pins. Now we'll see what they do as far as the fill is concerned. First Bill Trefel and he gets eight, leaving the one and two. Ooh, missed the spare. Missed the head pin, took out the two. That may hurt. Well, it's a little painful right now. It's a question of how much it may hurt. Now to the fourth box. We're in the third string. One, three, seven. The felled wood is to the right of the three pin. Got the one and three. Seven pin still there. Ralph Stewart wants to go down and there's a piece of wood rolling this way. Once it either touches or comes this side of the deadwood line, it has to be removed and it is. 
once again very quickly i tell you that the deadwood line goes across the lane exactly two feet from the center of the head pin toward the bowler to 10. all right now jim gregatis our defending champion is filling a spare that he made in the second and the fill is nine. For a moment, there was a chance it might be a strike. Beautifully set up, just a three pin with wood in back and wood in front and touching it. Big, big target. So he has cut the deficit to 11 and he has an opportunity now to cut it by how much seven more brings it down to four one two and four for a spare and he has three in a row Bill Trefo. And Bill comes back with a nine pin drop. The one pin he has to pick up is the 10. There are three pieces of wood. They are right now in a cluster to the left, perpendicular to the pit. He'll go directly at it, and he has it. Spare in the fifth. Here's the fill. He's too far to the right, but he's getting some action, and it turns out to be an eight. And once again, Ralph has to call time because the one piece of wood is off to the left. However, it's okay. He waves it as okay. One and two for a spare. Is he going to get it? Yes. Hey, we have a battle going right now. Here's our defending champion, Jim Gregatis of Brockton. He has three marks in a row, and now a fill on that third spare. Here it is. Got a break. It looked like it was going to be a bad split. He got seven as a fill, and the three pins that are standing are the four, seven, and eight. The wood is off to the right. He would like to see it out of the way so he can go right after that triangle. Wood rolled again, just as he was about to deliver. Is it going to be four in a row? Yes! I think he'd like to keep it going. <laughs> I don't think he needed that admonition. A strike! Boy, he's hot right now. But then Bill Trefel has two marks in a row also. Jim Gregatis has gone back into the lead. Now Bill Trefel fires and oh, he has left the corners full. Eight is the fill. Ralph has gone down to take a check. He says they're all in play. They're all behind the Deadwood line. There are four pieces of wood. He's got to figure out how he's going to spray these two to get both of them, and here it goes! Oh, didn't get it. Got the 10, and everything went behind the seven. So that's a 10. A strike for Bill Treacle. Now Jim Gregatis comes up and he is working on a strike. Five consecutive marks. Excellent. 
Excellent, Phil. He got uh, eight, and he has left the three and the five. With Wood to the left of the five. And yes! He has six in a row. Big eight, and another spare leave. It's the six and ten. And yes, he has seven in a row. Now Bill Trefo is working on a strike. He's up for his final two boxes. He's at 99, opposite 131. Tough split. Seven is the fill. He left the seven pin, the six and ten. There's one piece of wood. There are two pieces, but the one he's interested in, the one a little to the left of the three. Nope, didn't work. So eight is the fill. And in the box, it's nine. 116. And Jim Gregatis already at 131 with a bonus ball yet to be thrown. Now Bill Trefo. Bill has a triangle, no wood to help. This one is made up of the three, five, and six. He spares it. 126. League average, 125. The fill is just six. One thirty-two. Here's Jim Gregatis. He needs a one fifty to win. Seven marks in a row for our defending champion. Can he mark all the way out? Well, he's got his first thin hit. Just four. One three six nine to the right. Four seven to the left. No wood. And. Okay, seven in a row is where it stops. He still has five pins standing here. It's just a five. All right, with that five box, now he has to get every one of them in this last box to win. Remember, Billy had 17 pins lead coming in. He needs this pin to win. He needs this pin, this skinny pin to win. And yes! He has it. One pin. Wow! One pin. 391 to 390. What a finish. Okay, 781 is our total. We got to move along here. 10 either side will win $300. But just for having the card chosen, this person will receive a $50 gift certificate from Christmas tree shops. 
781 for $300. Uh, this one comes from Lowell, Massachusetts. It's Anita Clayton who will win the gift certificate, but not all the money. 731 was the guest. Okay, Jim, take another shot at the high-low jackpot. It's worth $100. Gun. I thought you deserved at least to get that. <laughs> I don't know. Son of a gun. You have, I'll tell you, you are the best bowler to have lost seven, seven in, in a row. row. Yeah, seven in a row. <laughs> yeah. I thought seven was my lucky number. I guess it isn't. And I know you'd say your prayers. I always say my prayers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have for you $350, and uh, you are our marksman of the day, so you got a $50 gift certificate from Rotman's Furniture. And in, uh, let's see, bonus money for Billy Tree for $150. I'll take it and go home okay. and be happy. Thank you. Good, Good to see you again. Nice to see you, too. And, uh, okay, this is another one from Din Brothers. I forgot to give Bill his, but, uh, however... Uh, you like to make it a little tough on yourself. Boy, I almost, I couldn't, I just couldn't let the ball go. Them last two boxes, but I, I made the 10. That's all I needed. Seven in a row, though. That did it. Uh, $350 in bonus money, $700 for winning. And your challenger next week will be a veteran bowler also, although he's not very old, Brian Kroll. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you. Bye-bye, everybody.